Hey YouTubers, I've got a review for you guys today. So I know the big fad right now is solar panels and everybody's buying all these portable power stations and all this stuff up, but I'll go ahead and tell you, uh, solar is great when the sun is shining, but when it's cloudy outside, you don't get very many watts from your solar panels and you just don't get that output from the sun like what you would expect. As you can see, I've got a solar array here. It's just a small one and I've got four 200 watt solar panels and I'm able to charge one 200 amp hour LiPo 4 battery. It takes all day and that's with, you know, perfect amount of sun coming down. It takes all day to charge that battery up. But if the sun is not shining and it's cloudy, it can take two days or three days. So if you like doing overlanding and camping and all that stuff, you need a, some sort of backup generator. And for me, I've had all kinds of generators through the years, the gas ones, and, and it seems like every time I get a gas generator, they'll last until you, you know, forget to drain all that fuel out of there. And everybody knows now that the fuel that we got is garbage. Ever since they started putting ethanol in it, it just gums up the carburetors, it eats up the fuel lines, and it's just, it's horrible. And so, uh, got tired of, having to deal with the gas generators so I wanted to get something that is uh, is better than gas cheaper than gas and this is where this comes in this here is an ALP generator and it is a propane generator and this thing is really amazing it has a long run time it only weighs 30 pounds and if you're wondering why it's such a small size well it's a small generator and uh, since it's not gas it doesn't have a gas tank on it so you know that's why it's so small uh, if you're doing some camping or just want something to have as an emergency if your solar panels are having some cloudy days and they're not charging then you could use this to charge your solar system up that you have so just to show you how portable this thing is again it's 30 pounds come on back here set it up on the tailgate here and give you a good view of it one thing that I, I really liked about this generator is number one it come in different colors so it does come in like a blue an orange like a bright green so if you're a jeeper like like us and you wanted something to match a Jeep it's cool that they offer different colors not probably not important to some of you but I thought it was pretty cool that they did offer that now what makes this generator special is you know it's a thousand watts max 850 watts running watts you can run it on a one pound propane cylinder the little green ones like you buy at the store it'll run for three hours at 25 percent load on a one pound propane cylinder it comes with this hose here to connect it and the way that you would hook it up is right here on the side it's got a little cap that you pop off and then you pull this cap off here. It's got a little protective cap. So you don't need any tools to connect it. You can see it's knurled right there. So it gives you a nice little grip to tighten it up. You just want to snug it up. You don't want to go crazy on it or anything. You just want to make sure it's, it's not loose. And then you connect this to the other end of a, a one pound propane tank. And then you just leave the tank set like this on to, to the side. Now, if you're one of my viewers and you want to use my coupon code, uh, you'll get a free $25 stainless steel five foot long braided hose. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to connect it to a 20 pound propane cylinder. And you just stick this end on like that. And you just tighten it up just like you would on a gas grill. And then when it's, once it's nice and tight, you take this end And then you pull the little protective cap off this end. And I save these because I put it back on when it's not in use. So there's no dirt or trash gets down into that. And then you just take and you hook it up just like this. You push it in there and then you just slowly thread it and make sure that you don't, you know, cross thread it or anything. You'll know. And then you just tighten it up. And then now you just open up the, uh, 
the tank just like that you set it to choke right in here you have like a uh, like a little purge button and it purges all the air out of the line and then after you hold the button in you'll start smelling propane and you don't need to do it long just maybe 10 15 20 seconds and once you start smelling a little bit of propane yep I smell it and then uh, it only takes a couple pulls now I've had this generator for three four months now and uh, the first time I, I used it I think it took four three or four pulls uh, to start it for the for the very first time so you know it's it's not hard to start it's got a small motor in it so it's not you know like a, a big generator where when you go to pull it it takes a lot out of you you know this one's fairly light and it's it's easy to to pull I'm gonna go ahead and crank it up because a lot of them you have to switch them on and off and you know if you've got somebody that don't know uh, which uh, side is on or off they might have it turned off and be trying to pull the, the cord so with this way it's always in the run position and whenever you want to turn it off you just hold that uh, button down and it, it cuts it off after a few seconds so I do like the, the off button on it. I think it's really cool I didn't want to make you guys wait to the very end to hear me crank this thing up I wanted to show you in the very beginning because I figure once you heard it, how quiet it is, and you would see that it's a it's a good good generator. It's pretty quiet. You know, 52 decibels is not not bad, and this thing's a fraction of the cost as as a Honda generator. Got a lot of good features. I'm gonna run through some of them here on the front, and uh, before I get too far along, I wanted to mention if you want this uh, braided steel hose right here. What you need to do is get on uh, outgenerators.com. I'll put a link down in the description. You put whichever color generator you want in your cart, and then you add the five foot braided hose into the cart, and then you punch in uh, Melton, M E L T O N, that's my last name, as your promo code, and then it'll subtract the price of this. Uh, this hose it'll save you like $25 for this hose um, just by adding that promo code so anyways I'm gonna run you through some of the features here right here is your on and off button which I just showed you then right here is your eco mode so you know if you're if you've got a device that's not using a lot of power you can leave it down in eco mode or if you've got something that's you know needs more wattage that's uh, more of a higher draw item i would leave it up here in regular and then over here is uh an item that you know if you're a camper or an overlander you're not going to want to miss this check this out guys now this is a, a set of dc charging cables and if you're asking yourself why would you need dc charging cables well let's say you're out in your jeep let's say you're out camping go to get in your vehicle to leave you got a dead battery well you can take 
plug this in right in there and you've got a 10 foot long cord and you can hook this up to your your battery in your vehicle and charge your battery up so that can really save your butt uh, this only works with like a lead acid batteries so I thought that was a pretty cool feature this little button right here beside it that's a circuit breaker and if you're interested in this cable I think this cable is like $17 on their website it's not expensive at all and like I said it's 10 foot long it's got some nice alligator connectors on it but I would definitely purchase this and have this one as just a backup so right next to your USB ports right here you have this uh, parallel um, ports there they make a, a cable that plugs into here and what this allows you to do is uh, hook two of the out generators in parallel and what that does is it doubles your capacity you go from uh, one that's putting out a thousand watts so if you add another one now you've got two thousand watts and that two thousand watts is max power and it would be seventeen hundred watts uh, with uh, running watts if you had two of them and then over to the side right here you've got these three LED lights and uh, the first one is just a green light that comes on that shows that it's running the second one is an overload light and it's red and you know if you uh, plug in something um, there to the uh, outlet and it's over the 850 watts that it's supposed to be able to run then that light will come on and say hey you need to turn turn it off you're you're using too much wattage and then the third light uh, i believe it's like a a yellowish color it's uh, an oil alarm and what that is is you know if you start running low of oil you know it'll shut itself off to keep from burning the engine up so you know that's a good feature and you know she's you should always check the oil in these generators before you use them but you know if for some reason you're running it and for some reason it uses a little bit of oil to keep you from burning the engine up in here so it's pretty neat and then down below you've got an LED light that's something I've not seen on uh, any other generator uh, it's a two watt LED light and this thing is super freaking bright and there's a switch right there for you to turn it on and off and uh, you know two watts is nothing so truthfully you know whenever the generators on a lot of times we'll just leave the light on if it's night time and then um, down here you've got a resettable uh, circuit breaker so if um, you know it pops you can reset it if it, if it gets overloaded and then you've got two 120 volt AC outlets right there and then if you want to ground the unit uh, let's say you want to you've got like a, a grounding rod and you want to run a, a cable over to it and ground it then you've got a little wing nut right there you can just undo that put your cable on there and tighten it up if you choose to do that I never do it but uh, as far as the unit goes been very pleased with it hadn't had any problems out of it uh, it's easy to work on one thing I like about it is if you look at the fit and finish of this thing it's really good I mean you can tell as soon as you pull it out of the box it's not some junk I mean it, it is really made well and uh, one of the things that I like is that you're able to just to take a screwdriver and loosen up the screw right here on top and if you wanted to use a, a socket you could too I believe that's a, a 10 millimeter I'm not sure but I always just use like a little uh, Phillips head screwdriver and you take out that bolt then you come over here take out this one and just put them aside and then you just pull this panel out and you can see it's got little grooves here on the bottom little slots right in there and then once you pull this off then set it aside and then you know you're right here at everything everything you need to get to is pretty much on on this side of the unit right here is your air filter so you know if you need to pull that air filter out you just mash that little tab and it pops out and you know it's reusable air filter if it gets dirty you just wash it in your sink and 
clean it out real good with like some um, simple grain or something like that. And then after you've cleaned it, you let it dry. And then you put a little like motor oil on the filter. And then you put just a real light coat of motor oil and put it back in. And that oil helps trap some of those particles. And then as far as uh, the, the carburetor, it's right in here. It's, that's your, your carburetor. And there's your choke right in there. And you can see the lines are really short and you know, they're easy to get to. And then right here, this is your um, oil uh, filler and that's also your, your drain as well. So this thing holds about uh, seven ounces, maybe a little bit less of, of oil. And so the way that you put the oil in there is you just use a little funnel, pour in your, your seven ounces of oil or to, till it gets to the, the, to the threads right there. And then it's full to drain it out. You just loosen this. Just loosen it up. I've got a little bit too much oil in it, but you can see you just loosen that up, tilt it to one side, put a funnel up underneath it, have it drain into like a container. And literally it's very easy to add oil to it. It's easy to drain the oil out of it. I do it on the bed of the truck uh, where it's, it's high where you can get to it you know, or you can do it on your kitchen counter I've done it in there too so now it says in the manual it says right here we recommend using a strongly decontaminated high quality four-stroke engine oil that meets or exceeds the American Petroleum Institute's SG or SF rating as required by US auto makers select an oil that is suitable for your average temperature in your area so you know I run like a, a 5w40 uh, oil in my four-wheeler so I thought well you know I'll, I'll use that uh, but I, I run like Rotella the synthetic version of it and it says here in the manual that you know your first oil change is at uh, one month or ten hours if it was me I'd change it in probably five hours and then again at ten hours I mean it takes literally just a few minutes to change it and then like again it only holds seven ounces of oil so you know I'm, I'm gonna change it twice within those 10 hours just to you know it's cheap protection so anyways um, and then after that it says you can change it every six months or ever hundred hours so you know again I probably wouldn't wait a hundred hours I would probably do it at 50 hours you know uh, it's so easy to change the oil in it I'm, and I want it to last as long as possible so you know I'm crazy about the maintenance on it so anyways as far as the side cover it just fits on back there at the bottom you put your two screws in it here at the top and you know it fits together really easy you don't have to over tighten these screws because they have um, it's into plastic but they have like little brass inserts and so just snug it up once it's snug you know it's tight enough it ain't gonna I've never had it come come loose on me once you get it just snug up that's all you need and then when you flip the generator around to this other side what you want to do is you locate this panel here on top and you just want to push up and this little panel right there houses your spark plug you can see it right down there it's been running so I don't want to pull it out it's hot but you know the first thing that I did when I got this generator was I pulled the side cover off of it and I pulled the top cover off and I pulled the spark plug out of it I wanted to see if there was a good spark plug in there and it has an NGK spark plug in there so it's a real tiny one and I checked uh, last night uh, they're like three dollars and 29 cents at advanced auto parts it's the cheapest I could find them but they're like three to four dollars so it's really really easy to access that and you know I put together like a little kit I've got this little uh, spark plug wrench where it's easy and I can fit it down in there these cost probably a couple dollars at Harbor Freight and then these are like the little free screwdrivers that they give you at Harbor Freight I thought you know I can put 
the screwdriver and the wrench and keep an extra spark plug and you know these hoses all in like a, a one bag or something and just keep it in your vehicle so if you go camping you've got the tools to work on it you got an extra spark plug and if you need to jump off your battery spend the extra i think it's 17 dollars or something like that buy this cable and then you put your promo code in you get this five foot hose and then it comes uh, with this uh, little hose to for the one pound propane tanks and then you you should be good plus you know you're going to need somewhere to store your little cap when you when you screw that on you take this cap off and you know when you un unscrew that you're going to want to put the cap back on there so you're going to have everything in a bag and then all these little plugs that goes on the ends of the hoses to keep everything nice and clean just put everything in a little bag and you'll have it all all when you need it so if you got questions about the generator it comes with a nice manual it's in color and it's you know it shows everything that you can imagine and it's nice pictures and it goes into great detail about what to expect i've went through here and highlighted a few things myself in the in the generator the manual but it's very clear um <laughs> there's no chinese writing in here there's no misprints no funky spelling or uh, none of that it is it's a very good quality manual and uh you know i just refer back to that and if you're wondering what all items can you run with a generator that puts out 850 watts well you can run a bunch of different items and probably the best thing you could do is go to harbor freight pick you up a watt meter or if you you know if you like getting on amazon uh they've got some watt meters on there for like 12 dollars and um, but I, I prefer this one. This is a kilowatt meter. Um, it's just probably one of the older brands. And it, it works good. And it tells you how many how many watts the device that you're, you're plugging into this is using. Very simple to use. All you do is just mash the watt button there and read how many watts it's the, the device that you're powering up inside your house is putting out. And, it, and you know, if it's under that... 850 watts as long as it doesn't uh, kick up above that 850 watts on startup then you should be good to go now from my experience what all have I been able to run on something like this you can run like a five or six thousand watt BTU unit air conditioner as long as it doesn't go over that you know 850 watts then you're good um, you can run a wash machine on it you can actually run a wash machine they don't put out that use that much wattage so I was able to run a wash machine on here and then uh, like I said you can uh, use that DC charging cable and you can charge up a, a lead acid battery right here with it you know like I was saying you know if you got a dead battery in your car also uh, you can plug in your power stations I've got a bunch of different power stations. I've reviewed power stations for years, and I've got probably uh, probably close to 10 power stations. And so you can pretty much charge most of the power stations I have. I've got one that I can't because uh, it, it re requires up to 1,000 watts, but most of these smaller power stations and medium-sized power stations, this will charge it, no problem. Let's say you do have a lithium battery. Like I showed you in the beginning, I've got 800 watts of solar panels. I told you I had a lithium battery. The way that I would charge that is I've got a dedicated lithium battery charger. This one here is from Rododo. This is the Rododo brand. And you can see that this thing puts out uh, 584 watts. So this thing will, will easily run um, my lithium battery charger. This is a 40 amp. Uh, charger so this thing can can charge my my solar batteries up no problem and you know this, this thing is able to pretty much power all the smaller stuff in your house now what will it not power well i would not uh, try to power a heater with it unless the heater's under that 850 watts you know i wouldn't try to plug anything uh, that big into it, you know, if you're running at 850 watts, you're really pushing this thing to its limit and You know, so if I was gonna run a heater with it, I wouldn't probably get one that's over 
uh, probably 500 watts just to be safe you know it's not good on it just to constantly run it at its max so you know if I was going to use a heater I would get one that's 500 watts or less just to just to prolong the life of it so it's not working as hard as it can all the time but uh, you can run computers on it because it is pure sine wave you can run TVs on it you can run DVD players anything that's a, a sensitive electronic this this device will, will run it like I said it's a pure sine wave so the waveform is nice and clean it's clean power it's just as clean as the power that you're getting out of your house and so that is you know, a pretty nice feature uh, it'll also power fans uh, you could hook a bunch of fans to this um, so like I said small air conditioners small electronics you could plug up a small uh, coffee maker to it if you if you're out camping won't well, just have to have coffee you plug one of them up and it'll run it all right so from my experience uh, the way that I've used the generator is you know I, I always like using products that use USB and I I like that because when it's USB, it means that they're they're not drawing very much wattage. And I found these light bulbs on Amazon. These are from a company called VT Power. And these light bulbs are just USB. Uh, got a USB plug on the, on the end of them, and they're DC. And so I use them for my power stations, but since this has USB ports on the front of them, I can plug these into the generator and uh, you know you've got a basically a light and a switch but then um, it comes with a couple splitters here and it comes with basically it turns one USB into two and so what you do is just plug this in here and then now you have two USBs and so what you can do is take and plug this in Now there's one light, and that only uses five watts of power. Then I've got another light right here, and I plug it into the other side, and that only uses five watts of power. So now you're at 10 watts. Then we got another one of these splitters, and in fact, I've got I got like all four of these bulbs and both the splitters for like 20 something dollars, like low 20s. And then you plug this one in. I think I ended up getting four bulbs. I only brought three out here, but if you want to charge your phone in, on one side, or if you want to plug in like a USB powered fan, you can do that. And I'm gonna plug in this other, other light bulb here. So now you've got three light bulbs that's using a total of 15 watts and then this fan here uh, doesn't use much wattage at all it's really really low it's like I think eight or ten watts and now you're not using very much wattage at all compared to if you was to plug uh, a lamp in out of your house that uses 120 volts you know it's gonna use more more wattage than using you know DC power it's, it's just more efficient and so uh, I'm going to plug in all of these and I'm going to plug in the power station. I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to see if I can run all of this and maybe even try to charge that battery at the same time as well. And let's see. All right. So one thing I wanted to mention before I crank the generator up again is you never want to have anything plugged up into the generator when you crank it up. You don't want to start it up with a big surge of, of power. So you want to unplug everything start your generator let it warm up just a few minutes and uh, then plug everything in and it's, it's going to be a little bit louder because it's sitting here on this metal tailgate and it's vibrating these light bulbs Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and start plugging in the small stuff. I mean, this is such low wattage, and the generator's warm. It's been running. There's the three light bulbs. 
Being powered. There's the fan. Then I'm going to turn on the light right here on the front of the generator. You can see that that thing's pretty bright. And then I said I was going to power up this uh, portable power station. This here's a, a 90 watt charging brick. And I've got power to my electrical cord. Plug in the kilowatt meter here. power station powered these three lights the fan and uh, it's pretty amazing what all you can do with just a small generator and imagine you know on a power outage or something like that you could run watch a TV you could power a small air conditioner uh, you might even be able to power a small air conditioner and watch a sm small TV at the same time you know so uh, a couple tips for you you know if you're needing a, a drop cord or something to plug into this um, this is just my personal preference, but I like using these rigid drop cords from Home Depot. Uh, they're lifetime warranty, so if you rip one, uh, you know, rip the insulation jacket on the outside of it, take it to Home Depot, they'll give you another one. It's got a lifetime warranty on it. And I've never had any problems out of them, and uh, you know, when I did rip the jacket on one of them, took it back to Home Depot, they gave me a brand new one. And so I found this one at like a, a yard sale on the side of the road. Got it for $8. This was, you know, probably a $20 or $30 drop cord. It's a 14 gauge. And so whenever you use a drop cord, just try to use the shortest one possible with the biggest diameter wires. And like I said, it's a 14 gauge, so it's a, a medium duty cable. But, uh, you know, maybe that'll help you out. And, you know, as far as the watt meter, you know, the kilowatt meter are really nice. Uh, but if you want something that has more of a light up screen, check out the ones on Amazon they've got some with a bigger screen that lights up where it's a little bit easier to read you know at nighttime or out in the Sun it's got a display that that lights up a little bit better so that's a little tip for you but as far as the the generator very pleased with it 
hadn't had any problems out of it. It's a good quality and uh, does have a, a one year warranty on it. The price on it, regular is like $549 or something like that, MSRP. And I think they've got them for like $529. So the real selling point on this generator for me is, is it being pretty quiet um, and also not having to deal with gasoline. Uh, gasoline right now, it's about $3.50 a gallon where I'm at here in Tennessee. Uh, propane, you can go to most uh, convenience stores and pick it up for around $20, all the way up to around $22, $23 for a 20 pound cylinder. Now, whenever they give you a, a, a tank and it's full, it probably only has maybe 18 pounds in it. They don't always fill them up to 20 pounds. So what I do is I find somebody that refills them. Uh, there's a, a market down the street here that's like a, a, a feed and seed store and I think they charge me $15 to fill it up. And when I say they fill it up, they fill it all the way up, put 20 pounds in it and they weigh it right there in front of you. So, you know, if you're running at a 25% load, uh, the generators at a 25% load, this uh, 20 pound tank will last you 60 hours. And you know, if you're at 50% load, you'll still get 30 hours. You can't do that with gas. You know, gas is a lot more expensive. Five gallons of gas is not gonna do much in these, you know, generators. It, it'll run through gas a lot faster. That's what was a major selling point for me. Plus, you know, propane, it's got a long shelf life. Get this new gas with ethanol in it, it doesn't last very long at all. A couple months, it's already it's going bad after like a month. So, you know, with propane, you can store this stuff for probably 25 years and, and it would still be good. And, you know, like I said, you know, these gas generators have a lot of fuel problems. Don't believe me? Call down to your local uh, repair shop and ask them what's the number one problem that they have with generators. And I guarantee you they're going to tell you fuel related problems. And so I, I speak from experience. I've had several generators and it's like if you don't get all that old gas out of there it just gums up and you know next year you're having to replace the carburetor or pull the carburetor off of it and clean it you know and it gets expensive now in closing I know I've already said it but if you want this free hose right here the five foot braided hose what you do you put the generator in your cart pick what color what color you want I think it comes in again blue green and orange and pick which generator you want, put it in your car, pick the five foot braided hose, put it in your car, and then go to the, uh, the promotional code box and punch in Melton. And that'll give you a free $25 hose so you don't have to purchase that. Until next time, thanks for watching.